interest earnings, which just continue to be nothing, and wholesale store sales, which went down just a little bit. Again, total revenue is based on the normal year and on our current rate structure for council policy. Okay, on the expenditure uh, side, you can see the base budget is uh, 26.6, and of course that matches the revenue number that Gene referenced earlier. That's an increase of 522,000. 893 compared to budget uh, last year. Uh, debt service, next slide. Uh, you see this year we're budgeting 77.255 7 million. That is a decrease of 143,000 compared to last year. Uh, this number, 7255, actually includes a uh, payment that we make, a transfer payment that we make to the GO debt service fund. 2010, we refinanced some of the debt in the utility fund uh, through GO bonds, and so the utility fund makes a payment to the debt service fund for that uh, portion of that refinancing. Here's the history of debt service in the utility fund, and you can see since 2003 4, uh, pretty steady drop. It went up that one year, but since then, it's basically been dropping as we uh, try to rely more on cash financing for capital improvements. And when we uh, can paste those capital improvements out properly, it's a lot easier to cash finance. And, uh, usually when we have to issue debt is when we have some sort of a major capital project that's going to cost six, seven, eight million dollars and draw down the uh, reserve too far. Uh, we will be issuing debt this next year, assuming that council approves the budget, a uh, relatively small amount. Comparison, but uh, we issued nine million last year, and we're still in pretty good shape with a uh, reduced debt service overall for the utility fund. So I think it's being balanced uh, fairly well, and gradually over time we can get that maybe down into the five six range uh, would be probably ideal. Uh, we do have some significant capital improvements coming up uh, that uh, you'll see in a moment, but uh, you kind of have to keep in mind when you're thinking about how to finance them. On the expenditure side. Uh, nothing particularly uh, exciting here compared to last year. Uh, basically, it's the same uh, structure uh, with minor differences between the categories of personal <coughs> services, services and other charges, supplies, and transfers. Cost increases, you're going to see this across the board uh, for all of our funds. Uh, Electricity is up 103,000. Uh, we have 71,592 in health insurance costs and 31,000 in TMRS costs in the utility fund that we had to deal with in that base budget. Uh, we had some cost savings or things that came out of the budget before we started, and uh, 220,000 of that was related to action steps that were funded uh, last year that were one time costs. Of course, it's the one time costs that come out in uh, the current year base budget. Uh, we had the aforementioned reduction in debt service requirements, and then uh, we had a one-time transfer to CIP last year for $719,000. This is that cash, a portion of the cash financing. Uh, this year you'll see a similar, slightly smaller number that we're coming, uh, we're using out of the operating fund for those cash finances and CIP projects. And that's it right there. That's $862,000 that uh, we're going to be transferring to CIP for portion of the $4.25 million of pay-as-you-go capital improvements. Uh, the rest of that $4.25 million will be coming from reserves. But the good news is that at least $862 million are funding out of their operating fund and uh, avoiding any further drawdown of those reserves. Uh, we've got $96,751 in uh, increase in the raw and treated water costs from um, our supplier in the city of Dallas. And this is the, the cost center that we typically uh, pass on in the form of a uh, rate increase to our own retail customers. Uh, historically, those uh, increase in cost from Dallas have been uh, calculated uh, for rate increase, and we got that for you uh, later on in the presentation. I think it's less than 1% on the water side. Uh, we've got $75,000 in the base budget to fund uh, 
state required impact fee review land use assumption plan. Uh, once every five years, you have to go through this process in order to continue to charge capital recovery fees. Uh, we have to document our use and uh, justify the, the amount of the fee. So the last review was uh, a little more than almost five years ago in January 2007, so we have to uh, budget for this this year. Uh, we got 55.9 for another control system and then a series of uh, smaller improvements uh, in the water, wastewater plant. You can see those. I'm not going to go through all of these in detail. If you have uh, questions on any of them, I'm sure Carol will uh, be happy to answer them for you. And these are all part of the operating budget. Uh, as far as the structure of personnel in the uh, utility fund, really the only change we have is a plan operator position that we added during the year by reallocating overtime uh, line items. And uh, that was accomplished by moving uh, some of the personnel from 12 hour to 8 hour shifts. And I think that's given Carol a little bit more flexibility in dealing with uh, people's schedules and making sure that uh, the plan of staff had it. Okay, this is your fund balance. Uh, first line is the 910 actual beginning and ending. So you can see a pretty sizable increase that particular year. Uh, here's our 1011 budget. We budgeted, of course, the beginning 1011 budget is the same technically as the ending 910. You can see the difference here. And so when we go down to the, to the actual 2010 column, these two numbers match up. So we started with 16.8 and we were budgeting 15.5, so we had a pretty sizable increase, and that was, uh, of course, due to uh, water and sewer sales coming in and uh, higher volumes than what we projected. So we start with 16.8. Uh, we projected uh, ending balance this year, we think it'll be somewhere in the neighborhood of 16.6, and so that's what we start with in the 11 12 base year. And um, when we do the drawdowns, for that CIP program, uh, we're projecting an ending balance of 13.2. And here you can see how that works. Starting with that beginning fund balance, adding revenues and expenditures which match. There's the transfer out of 3.4 million, uh, which in addition to that 800,000 out of the operating fund equals 4.25, I think. You know, that's being funded out of cash for the CIP program leaving the balance of 13.2. Uh, we've got an operating reserve based on the current base operating budget, uh, which is 15% of that base operating budget, and that amounts to $4 million, and that leaves an undesignated reserve of 9.2, which uh, we plan on using for future CIP pay as you go findings. Uh, so, expenditures for reserves, I've got a small amount here that we're using to pay for a 380 agreement related to the Catherine Tom Thomas townhome project. And then the bulk of it is the PAGO uh, portion of the CIP for water line replacements, sewer line replacements, and I&I &I repairs. And again, there's that 862 combined with that equals 4.25. On that part there.
most of this type of water line replacement in the Tobago program is for, uh, for the most part, distribution type of water lines. Uh, occasionally we'll do a large water line. Actually, in this particular year, we've got a fairly significant sewer line. I mean, actually, in the main but on the east side, that's uh, coming out of this. But generally speaking, we, we find us with the big mains out of the uh, revenue bond issues. And we have to do them to try to pace those out time goes out over time so you don't have to do them all at once and have that impact that gets you all at once. So here's the uh, use of the funds. Uh, again, 250000 for I-9 repair and study. You may have seen some of this going on recently. This is kind of an ongoing all, all the time type of uh, project because you can't do a city all at one time, and so you, from time to time you'll see people with trucks around manholes and maybe a little smoke or something coming up out of, the, out of the ground, unfortunately. Sometimes you see that or out of a manhole, and that's sort of where you are doing that I&I &I investigation. I&I, &I, for those of you who don't know, uh, is inflow and infiltration. What you want to do in the sewer system is minimize that uh, inflow or infiltration from storms. Rainwater because when it gets into the system, then we have to treat it and drive your costs up. So, a lot of our lines are down in low lying areas because they're gravity and they tend to be in ditch lines and things like that. And uh, sometimes the ditches will overflow or creeks will overflow and then it will go down into a manhole. And, and you'll see our, our sewer plant production go way up during those storm events. And this is designed to keep that at a minimum. And the water line replacements, 500,000, and then again the bulk of this is for the, the gravity main out on the east side. The uh, rest of the bond program or the CIP program uh, for, the, for the next couple of years. This year, uh, talking about issuing $4 million for refurbishment of uh, or construction of a 2 million gallon clear well of the water treatment plant. And uh, That'll do it for the water plan, I think, for a little while. Uh, next slide, you can start seeing the planned capital program through fiscal year 15 16. You see, we're still using uh, revenue bonds because even though we might be planning on using reserves to pay for a lot of it, that comes to 9.5. If you remember, our undesignated reserve from before is about that same number. So, uh, yeah, you can see here. 9.2 was the available undesignated reserve and our future needs are 9.5 so we really can't plan on using more, much more than that out of cash until we generate that cash. And some years we'll generate it like this year, I suspect we'll have a little bit more than we thought and some years you won't. So here's the future. Uh, the next slide. Okay, here we go. 20, or 12, 13 uh, plan out of reserves for these projects here. And bonds for midway transmission pump station, and potentially this water reuse program phase one. This is a program that you've seen before, and we tend to push that forward depending on whether we feel like we have the capability of financing it. It's a program that we'd like to get going because we can save a little bit on our water costs uh, from Dallas if we get that up and running. But it's not something that absolutely have to do, unlike something like a water plant expansion or a sewer treatment plant expansion. But we think we can get it in, hopefully, in 12-13. And so you'll see this line item in the next slide. You'll see uh, additional phases of that project over the next uh, couple of years. In 2013-14, we're going to have to start looking at a wastewater treatment plant expansion, and that's the design for that. Next slide. And there's the expansion itself in 2014-15. We have to start those projects when we're required to by the DCEQ, and there's a, uh, a mechanism where you look at your existing plant capacity, and once your actual treatment volume gets up to a certain percentage of that capacity, the TCEQ forces you to begin those plant improvements. Okay, next slide. So, on the right side, uh, as you know, the utility fund is pretty capital intensive, uh, personnel and uh, 
and like the general fund, personnel related costs are very <coughs> minimal in the utility fund. Historically, we were able to fund those operating needs by controlling costs and implementing rate increases when we need to. Uh, our more expensive capital costs, like plant expansions, things like that, have been financed through revenue bonds and when we can, transfers from reserves. To ensure that we're able to do that into the future, what we need to do and what you have done in the past is make sure that you do regular, incremental, small increases in the rates when you have operating costs increase, such as the, the uh, cost of water from Dallas. And uh, that willingness to make those types of rate changes is needed is one of the criteria that is looked at by the bond rating agencies. And, uh, so that history that Gina showed you before of uh, rate increases uh, or disappearances uh, illustrates that willingness to make sure that your rates are keeping pace with the operating costs that you have. And so when you look at this, any one year is relatively minor. The biggest one we've had was 2003, 4 to 3%. And then we had nothing in 2004, 5. We had to get a rate decrease somewhere back there in the late 90s. Uh, but if you were to wait and were to do nothing, and then you were to add all these up, you'd be talking about a significant hit for water bill. That's what you're trying to avoid. You don't want to do those, those uh, eight, nine, ten percent increases and then you know, save your uh, rate changes in those off years for uh, and pass them on to somebody else in the future. So this year again, uh, we're looking at about 0.65. Next slide. These are your current rates. 1325 is the base charge for water, 820 is the base charge for sewer, and then the volume rate for each additional 1,000 gallons is 274 for water, 330 for sewer. Here's our rate comparison, and we remain kind of right in the middle compared to the uh, survey cities that we use. Uh, Irving's down at the bottom, by the way. Go back. This is based on 5,000 gallons. And because the base charge is set at a low consumption rate, you have to kind of look at the, what happens for somebody who's using a small amount of water, the next slide, versus a larger amount of water. You can see is the more water you use, we tend to jump up a little bit in the comparison to other cities. That's because our water rates uh, tend to be a little bit higher as you uh, use more water. <clears throat> at least your bill tends to be a little bit more high. So we're looking at 0.65% on the water rate. Uh, that would uh, cover that $97,000 increase in uh, Dallas water utility uh, charges. And uh, this would be the resulting rate from uh, 1325, the base charge to 1334, and from 274, the volume to 270. So we'll need direction from you at uh, some point on uh, what to do about that water rate, uh, how to allocate any of the revenue that, uh, again, we're, right now we're balanced. So to increase the rate, it's going to generate another 97240 uh, Some of that may depend on what you do on the general fund. If you're going to do anything in the general fund of compensation, you have to do it here on the utility fund, too, and that would need some of that $97,000 Generally speaking, I think that anything left over you can probably just put into the CIP program and add it to your uh, water or sewer line replacements. And then we're also going to need some direction regarding a fee modification. Steve can probably talk to you a little bit more about this, but what we're uh, recommending is that you increase your fee for emergency cleaning of private residential sanitary sewer lines to $140. Right now it's $100 after week, after hours, weekends, and holidays. It's free for the first two if you, uh, is that just, okay. During the day. During the day. During the day. Right. So during regular hours, you have somebody come in. You need to have somebody come in and have us come in and, and look at it. You get two free ones, but this is the after hours charge. And, uh, this can actually eat us up a little bit in terms of time and effort. We'd really like to kind of, over time, get out of the 
private line cleaning business. But, uh, it's probably an incremental policy decision that council needs to make in order to do that. So that's basically it on the utility front. Unless y'all have any questions. Okay, any questions?
leave everything that, that the way it is except raise the after hours and weekends and holiday from one hundred to one hundred and forty dollars. Second. I would motion by Council Granite to uh, increase the after hours rate from one hundred to one hundred and forty dollars to second by Captain Gilmore. Any questions to say? All in favor? Opposed?